Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Between now and December 16th, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing where 13 winners will each win one of the Flipside Gaming Masterpiece Collection playmats. See the description below for more details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It is Pro Tour Guilds of Ravnica Weekend. We'll be discussing Standard and what kind of price movements were occurring leading up to the weekend. We'll also talk about Ultimate Masters and its influence on many of the cards that we now know are going to be reprinted in that set, and a whole lot more. Quickly before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to support the channel, you'll find some in the description down below, including our Patreon page, that's linked down there. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon, including Ultimate Masters. And finally, Flipside Gaming still offering a promo code. And I'm going to link separately their pre-order page for Ultimate Masters because they actually have a really awesome deal. If you use the promo code, get the 10% off. It's only going to cost about $260 shipped, which is actually a great price. So if you were thinking about getting a box and you couldn't find a good price, you might want to check that out. But as always, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. I appreciate you all. And let's get into it. We'll begin, as we always do, with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Number five, Varaska's Contempt, down 94 cents to 17.95. This card is a little overdue for some normalization. I do feel like it will be trending down. However, this weekend at the Pro Tour, there's a lot of Golgari mid-range decks out there in the field. So I'm sure we're going to see this card a lot on camera, which means it most likely will stabilize this week, maybe even go up slightly before it does start to trend down again. It is a rare, not a mythic, so $18 does feel a little expensive just overall, even though it does see tons of play. I would expect in the short term over the course of the next maybe three to four weeks that this could get down closer to at least 15, maybe $14. Number four is Orr's Gateway, down 98 cents to 12.87. Now this card spiked pretty aggressively last weekend, so it's not unusual to see this card retract and normalize a little bit the following week. However, it's a key player in that Jeskai Control deck, which is very popular right now. Usually four of are found in that deck. Now the reason it works so well there is because the first side of the card helps you work fast through your deck to get to the answers you need when you need them. And secondly, once you transform it, you could have a big play, maybe get a lot of mana for an explosion from Expansion Explosion or a big Bane Fire. This weekend at the Pro Tour, if one or two of those decks does make the top eight, I would expect this card to quickly stabilize, maybe even bump up slightly for a short period of time before it starts going down again. Number three, Doom Whisperer, down $1.77 to $21.85. This card is seeing standard play. Maybe not as much as some people anticipated, but it does show up in at least some of the Golgari midrange decks, although it feels like you're seeing it less and less there. And it also is in some of the control builds, but unfortunately, of course, it's not in Jeskai control, which, like I said, is a little more prominent. But you might find this in Grixis or Demir control. With that being said, though, it's still over $20, and the main reason for that is Commander. This is an amazing Commander card. And that's going to prop up the price point a little bit, but I would expect this to continue to go down unless it has a really big breakout weekend at the Pro Tour. Number two, Carnage Tyrant, also down $1.77 to $32.99. This card has been increasing pretty aggressively recently, too. And again, it was due for a little bit of normalization. You're seeing that today. But it is going to see a lot of play this weekend. It already has. There's, again, a lot of Golgari mid-range decks out there in the field. So I would imagine this will get a lot of camera time. We already saw it on day one quite a bit. It looked pretty good. If anyone hasn't noticed this card yet, for some reason, they will because of the coverage. And I do think it will stabilize, maybe bump up slightly this week before it starts to normalize again. Eventually, I think it settles down in the short term, somewhere between $25 and $30, just based off the amount of play that it's seeing in standard. And also, remember, it does see a little modern play, too, typically out of the sideboard of Titan Shift. Number one, Crucible of Worlds. This is the fifth Dawn version, down $1.97 this week to $24.99. Now, of course, this was reprinted in Magic 2019, which is why it's standard legal, and also the reason it's going down in value still at this point. It's a good card, it's just not great in standard because it's got no support around it. It's an awesome casual card, and in modern, it's in some pretty important decks. Typically, you might find a copy in the sideboard of Mono Green Tron, or one sometimes in Azorius Control. Also, the War of Invention deck will run these in the main, too, which is pretty popular right now. Let's move on to our top 10. Yep, we're doing 10 again. Standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Things are calming down a little bit. I was thinking of only doing top 5, but there were a couple of the Magic 2019 Welcome Deck cards on the list. I didn't want to short y'all cards, so I did go with the top 10. There was enough happening. Number 10, Sarkon Fireblood is up 36 cents to 1472. Okay, not moving all that much. 
but you do find this sometimes in Jeskai control builds, and there are still dragon builds hanging out in standard. They haven't put up necessarily a lot of big results or anything, but they are out there. Number 9, Resplendent Angel. Of 51 cents to 21.49, of course the key part of Boros Angels as well as Selesnya Angels. We'll have to see if those decks fare well this weekend though. Number 8, Niv Mizaparin. Of 53 cents to 3.49. Now if you've been watching these Market Watch videos over the last month or so, you know is it has been the hot color. And of course that's due to Jeskai Control. Is it Control? Is it Drake decks? All doing very well right now. This card sometimes shows up in any number of those builds. Number seven, Path of Discovery, up 66 cents to $1.64. Typically, you'll find four of these in a lot of the Slaznia tokens builds. If that deck does well this weekend, maybe top eights, I would expect this card to spike relatively aggressively. It's very cheap at $1.64. Number six, Sulphur Falls from Dominaria, up 71 cents to $11.99. You can probably guess why this is going up. Of course, it gives you the Izzet colors, which are very sought after right now in some big decks. Number five, Silver Beak Griffin, up 94 cents to $1.90. So there's a few places you can find this card. Unfortunately, none of them are the Magic 2019 set proper. You can find one in the White Welcome deck. You can find one in the Spellslinger starter deck. You can find four in the Ajani Planeswalker deck. That's the easiest way to get these if you need them. But the reason it's going up this week is because there is a little attention on the card. There are some white weenie players that are trying to work this into a standard build. Now, the more successful builds typically don't seem to be running this, but if you want this card to play in that deck, I wouldn't spend $1.90 for it, just shop around. The only reason this got bumped up is because you don't have a lot of online sellers opening up Planeswalker decks and Spellslinger kits and Welcome decks to sell these online. Somebody must have posted them at a slightly higher price, that's why you get the bump here. But if you go to your local game store, you should be able to find this a lot cheaper. Number 4, Grasping Scoundrel, of 95 cents to 304. This can only be found in the Black Welcome deck. Again, not in Magic 2019. Because of that, you're just seeing a weird price bump. Don't pay $3 for this card. This one isn't seeing any relevant play, unlike the last one. Number three, of course, the Fairy Hero of Dominaria. Still going up, $1.62 to 5402. This card just doesn't quit. It's hot right now due to the hype leading into the Pro Tour. There were a lot of pro players talking about this card, discussing it on Twitter, mentioning that they're going to be playing it. So yes, it's in a lot of key decks, Jeskai Control being one of them, Azorius Control. You also find this in Turbo Fog decks, which there actually are some of those in the field as well. Teferi, of course, is still all over the place. It's not changing. We've talked about in the past how this has influenced Modern when it comes to control builds, also Legacy Miracles. Yeah, this card will stabilize, at least for the short term at some point soon here. But down the road, again, think about five, six years down the road, this could be one of those $60 to $80 cards easily. Number two, Banefire. Two versions here. Dual deck speed versus cutting up 53 cents to 547. Duels of the Planeswalkers up 208 to 572. Of course, this card was reprinted in Magic 2019, which is why it is standard legal. Usually coming out of the sideboard to deal with control matchups, typically a one of, sometimes two of, but it does have a big role to play in the standard meta, especially considering how good some of these control builds are. Jeskai Control will run this for mirror matchups. You'll find this in Drake decks, some of the Boros builds as well, Mono Red Aggro. Feels like it's all over the place right now. Number one, what else could it be? Arclight Phoenix, up $215 to $24, a key card in those Drake decks. John Finkel's running that deck. We saw it on camera yesterday. It looked amazing. This card is going to have a big weekend, I think, and will go up even more than it already has. It has gone up actually in the last 24 hours or so as we're moving into the second day of the Pro Tour at this point. So I do expect more growth for this week. But after that, I do believe it will begin to stabilize and slow down a little bit once people start to obtain their copies. Don't forget though, there are modern decks running this card as well. We'll have to see where those end up in the coming weeks. Okay, let's move on to modern. With the top 10 modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Yep, another top 10. Why is that? Well, because of the influence of the Ultimate Masters reveal that occurred this week. We found out, first off, that the set existed. Secondly, we saw 41 cards that would be in the set. 40 of those cards are also in the box topper subset. These reprints, as you can imagine, are having a pretty big impact on their previously printed versions in the secondary market. So big, in fact, that we're doing a top 10, and we're basically focusing just on cards that have lost at least $5 worth of value. There's plenty more cards that we're not even talking about today that lost 2 3 $4 dollars. Now, a few days ago, a lot of people were speculating, myself included, that because of what we found out about this set, that the pricing impact might not be as drastic as other master sets. Although that doesn't seem to be the case because things have changed over the course of the last few days. First off, when the announcement occurred, they mentioned it was a limited release. We don't really know what that means, 
But so far, it feels like there's a lot of game stores selling these things online. It doesn't feel like there's any shortage of places you can pre-order them from or numbers that are available for pre-order. So that calms people's fear in that regard. Secondly, the price point was just extremely high. We talked about that in the other video. I won't go into all those details. But since then, we see a lot of stores selling it much cheaper than retail price. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you go to Flipside Gaming right now and use our promo code, you can get a box for $260 shipped. That's a really, really good price. But even if you didn't find a deal that good, I have seen these things pretty consistently around $280. So they are out there. They're not as expensive as we thought. They're still expensive, but not as much as we thought. And they do seem pretty available. Now that people see that, guess what? Secondary market prices are starting to really drop. And that's what we're going to see here. So let's get into it. Number 10, Liliana of the Veil, vale, down 503 to 8996. This is the Innistrad version. Great Jun card, as well as many other decks. We actually saw a number of good Jun cards in those first few previews. Number 9, another mythic rare in the set, Snapcaster Mage, down 511 to 6999. They're using the same art, actually, from Modern Masters 2017 that you see here. Still going to be a mythic. Kind of wish it was a rare, but it still is going down in value. Number eight, Gaddick Teague finally gets a reprint on 512 this week to 4487. This will be a rare in the set, not a mythic. So I would expect this to lose a lot more value as time goes on. It was kind of inflated because it's from Lorwyn, which comparatively had a lower print run during that time period. And also it's in a lot of big decks like humans, for example. Number seven, Tarmogoyf. And this, of course, will be a mythic in the new set. Down 540 to $70.39 for this Modern Masters version of the card. They're all going down, just not quite to the same level this one is. Again, another Jund favorite here, but the C's playing a lot of other places too. Number six, Through the Breach. This will be reprinted at Rare, down 573 this week to 3930. And of course, you'll find this in Modern Grishel brand. You'll also find this in Sneak and Show and Legacy, among other places. Number five, Celestial Colonnade, down $580 to $50.04. This will be reprinted in the set as rare. And of course, this is a key part of modern control builds. Number four, everyone's favorite Tron card. This will be a mythic. It's Karn Liberated, Modern Masters 2015, down $619 to $83. New Phyrexia, down $622 to $80.97. Number three, huge tribal lands here, seen in so many big decks, including humans, just to name one. But... It will be reprinted again as a mythic rare, like it was in Modern Masters 2017. That version goes down this week, 574 to 7345. Avacyn Restored goes down 674 to 7225. Number two, Noble Hierarch. Another big humans card here, but this card also sees playing a lot of other decks. And it is being reprinted as a rare. Modern Masters 2015 down 607 to 7392. Conflux down 676 to 7323. And number one, another one that will be reprinted at rare, Engineered Explosives. Fifth Dawn, down 719 to 8280. Modern Masters, down 753 to 7630. This has seen a little bit less play recently percentage-wise. It was actually already going down before the announcement was made that it was being reprinted. So that's why it is the top card. Now, it's still seeing a lot of play, don't get me wrong. As a matter of fact, it's a great sideboard card in a lot of modern and legacy builds. And you will find this in the main deck of Ironworks combo. So it's not going anywhere, but it will lose more value. Okay, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Now we're going to see some commander cards on the list. Obviously, this is a low week for modern. Number five, Sword of Feast and Famine. This is the version from the modern event deck. It's going up 85 cents to 3587. Not a huge climb here, but this is a good commander card, especially in Agila builds. Number four, Idyllic Tutor. I'm 93 cents this week to 2713. And this is a Morning Tide card, so these tend to get a little jumpier considering the lower print run during that time in Magic. But also, this is a great Commander card. Great upgrade to the Adaptive Enchantment Commander 2018 deck, as a matter of fact. Number three, Ensnaring Bridge. This is the 8th edition version, going up $1.46 to forty-four forty-four this week. Now, overall, this card has been going down since it was reprinted in Masters 25. But this version, anyway, stabilizing this week. Mostly due to the fact that it is a good card in some popular decks right now. Both Burn as well as the War of Invention deck are gaining momentum, and I think that's what you're seeing here. Number two, Sakashima the Imposture, up 274 to 2899. This card has been popular for a number of weeks now, again because of Commander. Ever since Atrada the Silencer came out in Guilds of Ravnica, a lot of people have been trying to pick up this card. Number one, Copperline Gorge, up 722 to 1997. This card is going up quite a bit. 
and Dredge is just doing better right now in Modern ever since Creeping Chill came out in Guilds of Ravnica, and this is typically a 4 of in the mana bases of those builds. Okay, let's move on to our Vintage Magic Spotlight. Unlimited is still going to take up the bulk of this list, although we do have some cards from other sets to talk about today. But that set has just been so hot as more of the stores and online sellers have been a little more apt to sell and buy those cards over Alpha and Beta because they're just easier to move. They're also rare enough for collectors to still care, and 93-94 players can use them. So overall, they're very popular, although they are cooling off a little bit now. First, we're going to look at Queen Marchesa, though. She's up 507 this week to 1499. She's a fantastic commander card, but one of the big reasons she's going up right now is because of legacy play. The four color loam decks pretty much consistently now run a copy of her out of the sideboard. Because of that, especially coming off Eternal Weekend, this card sees a jump. Sword of the Ages, this is a reserve list card. It jumps this week, 1079 to 7199. Hercules Recall is next, and this is the original Antiquities version up 1599 to 8692. This is not on the reserve list, it has been reprinted a few times, and it does see play in some decks here or there. However, the reason this one's going up this week is because it's the harder to find Antiquities variant. Alright, from here on out, all the cards on our Vintage section are going to be from Unlimited. The first one, Blaze of Glory, this is on the reserve list, it did not get reprinted and revised. It's up $17.50 to $75. And this is one I talked about in a video last month that I felt like this was one a lot of people overlooked. Hopefully you grabbed a copy then because it's starting to take off. Mahamodi Jin makes our list again this week up 2187 to 9460. Not on the reserve list. There's been many reprintings. Pure Lace also on our list two weeks in a row up 2461 to 6995. This is not on the reserve list. It was reprinted and revised as well as fourth edition. Don't really see it being reprinted anytime soon though because it's just not that good of a magic card. Savannah Lions of 2793 to 14999. Again, a card that is not on the reserve list and has been reprinted many times. And the last one in this section, Wheel of Fortune of 7291 to 34950 this week. Now, this is on the reserve list, but it was reprinted and revised if you're looking for a cheaper copy, although that copy is not all that cheap anymore either. But a great 9394 card here for sure. Let's move on to our Commander Spotlight. Commander's a little slower again this week, although we did see some cards in the modern list, but we have a couple more here. Azuri's Predation goes up $1.05 to three ninety seven. Second week in a row that this card is on our list. It's a very solid Commander card and has not been printed since Commander 2015. Expropriate. You might remember this as a Mythic from Conspiracy Take the Crown. It's up $1.81 to twenty four ninety nine. Another solid Commander card that is yet to see a reprint. Nothing going on in Pauper this weekend, so this does conclude the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Hopefully you'll get a chance to watch Pro Tour Guilds of Ravnica. Definitely whatever happens this weekend, especially on Sunday, will have some influence on next weekend's Market Watch and the card movement throughout the week, and we will keep tabs on that for you. However, I'm not expecting huge changes because the Pro Tour was so late this time. A lot of people already bought into their decks. The meta was starting to get figured out. There's no big surprises this weekend, in other words. So there will be some influence, but it won't be as drastic as maybe some other Pro Tours that you might remember. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.